Okay, welcome again, ladies and gentlemen. We are continuing with our precious series. And today we are covering the fourth security control. If you have not viewed the previous video, please go visiting them first. Because without visiting them, you cannot have a big picture of what we are doing here. And before we proceed, I would like to remind you that we have this special WhatsApp number at the bottom right of this screen, where you can ask us questions, you can query us, and we'll respond to you. But also in the description, we have a special group that you can join to have timely update of what is happening in this channel. So let us continue with our session. Now, what is data protection as a control for cybersecurity? Actually, this entails the process and the mechanism. It means it is a two-sided coin. One of the side, it is concerned with procedures, with guidelines, with policies about the data. And the other side, it's concerned about now the mechanical thing, the technical things that you have to do on your given assets and your given infrastructure. But both of these procedure staffs and the technical staffs, they are both concerned with Things that helps you to identify data, to classify data, how to handle your data, how to handle the retention of the data, and how to dispose your data. So, actually, why do we need this protection now? Why do we need to have data protection control specifically to secure our data? One of the reasons is that the technical sphere or the IT sphere or the cyberspace that we have now is different from the old time. At the old times, you could just have data at your given land, that's it, you just focus on it. But today's data is not only localized in your given company boundaries. You may have data at crowds, you may have data at portable end user devices that users sometimes they even go with it at home. For instance, the user that work at home and some system or some application are accessed by users by using mobile devices. All this device contains your data. So even partners, you can have third party partners that you integrate with. For instance, you have an integration with a certain service provider for you to complete the cycle of your given software and what and what. So it means also your data also in one or another is moving to and forth from the given service provider. So all these things, they have to be taken care of with consideration and seriously from the beginning. So this is one of the things that make us to be sensitive about data and to ensure that our mechanisms and our process of handling data consider all these kind of source of data that we have in this contemporary cyber space. But not only this, if you have this data from all these data sources and they are not monitored, for instance, it means that if we are breached and the main objective of any data breach, the serious damage that can be done is exfiltration of your data. So if these data are not monitored, it means that you may have a breach on your side or on your partner, but you are not even knowing that the data now are moving from your repository to elsewhere. So this is one of the things that makes this control very important. But not only this, sometimes theft happens, physical theft. So if we, do not, we are not sure or we don't have important procedures and guidelines and mechanisms to handle things like this, it means our data may end up where they are not supposed to be. And, there, and if an enterprise lose control of its data, the damage is amazing. The damage is very tremendous. The damage is very serious. And even the reputation will be at stake. For instance, imagine a bank has been breached and not only just being breached, the data of accounts has been stolen. So someone has all the accounts of people and all their balance. There are so many implications about it. So that's why this control is kind of very serious one to hold about. But one thing also we need to know when we talk about data protection, we need to have a broader sense of data privacy because this is not a new term, data privacy. But here we have to know data privacy is not just about encryption because we are talking about the process, the guidelines, the procedures, and the whole life cycle management of data. So it means data privacy in our sense here, it includes all appropriate use and the management of your data, not only the encryption, that means you can have proper encryption and proper 
decryption, but people who are accessing your data, they are not the one who are supposed to access it. That is also a breach of data privacy. So all these things have to be considered, and all these things make this control such a very important one in securing our cyber space. So we have to understand that, according to statistics, it has been clear that most of data damage has been happening because of poor management of data. So we may be focusing on securing our cyberspace that no hacker can breach us or securing our physical environment that physical theft cannot happen. But because we have poor data management, then still we can have a very big data loss. And of course, you may be find and experience show that there are some incidents that has been reporting as hacking attempt or data breach, but actually most of those breach that results to the loss of data, most of them, according to statistics, are caused by poor data management, not just the cyber space. I don't mean that the cyber things, and I mean the cyber is not a vector that people use to exfiltrate organization data. No, it is. But if you compare the damage that have been caused by poor management of data to the damage that have been caused to physical theft and data breach, those that are caused by poor management of data are huge. So that's why we need to take this control as serious as it is. So how can we achieve data protection as a cybersecurity control? First, we have to establish those process that we manage. I mean, we mentioned before, and this include the framework. Now, we are not going to talk more about these stuff because there are more of documentation, policies, and procedures. So we are just going to highlight them, especially the process stuff. So we need to have the framework for data, the, the issues of classifying data, like this data is public, or this data is confidential, or this data is sensitive. All these are concentrated on the part of management of data, because if there is no classification, the data that was meant to be confidential can be accessed by people who are on the public side. And of course, then the reputation can be damaged. But the problem was just the management thing and the data was not classified. So there was no predefined or premeditated things or triggers to show now this data has crossed the boundaries where it's supposed to be accessed. And of course, there had to be also guidelines and procedure for requirements, like how data should be protected, how data should be handled, what retentions parameter that we should be concerned. And if we dispose this data, what is the proper way of disposing it? For instance, you may have a company having a laptop or a desktop with hard drives that previous stored very sensitive company data or very sensitive enterprise data. But then when that devices has got some issues for repair, it just been taken to a street technician. There are no procedures that know that this hard disk has stored in it some very sensitive enterprise data. So maybe there should be this precaution and this precaution. They are just shared with a normal technician. Or sometimes they even sell those machines without destroying the data. And sometimes even destroying it, they're just destroying it by deleting it. But they are very special I mean, tools or very special command that to be run to elast this kind of data. So all these frameworks, procedure, and guidelines have to be there because without this, no one can be able to stand and say, now this is wrong and this is right. But the other side of the coin, after putting this process stuff in, in its perspective, there has to be a mapping. A mapping consists of several things. I mean, data inventory mapping consists of several things. For instance, first, you have to know the software you have that access a certain types of data and where those data are stored. And if you have known that, the second stage, you have also to segment the, I mean, the asset that store this sensitive data based on the sensitivity of their data. What it means is if I have assets that have data that are very confidential, all those assets I'm going to group them in their own network segment. So even the firewall rules or the restrictions that are going to be applied to that segment is going to be different from these other segments that have data which are known to be maybe like public data or whatever. So all this helps you to make sure that your data are secure. So what are the mechanisms? What are the safeguards that you have to put in place when you are implementing this data protection. And of course, as I said, most of them are procedural stuff. For instance, 
the data management process has to be established. We talk about it and the data inventory mapping, the one that we have just covered. But also there is this issue of access control. And this, we implement most of this in the system or in the application level. Like you have developed their system or application, people should just be given access to functions and to, and to roles that they are meant to have, but not just to allow people to have full access and they, and they use it at their discretion. Now that's the problem, yeah. Also the issue of data retention. Data retention is all about how long are we, you going to keep the data? For instance, you have a database, you have taken a backup. Now, how long are you going to keep that backup until you no longer need it according to your retention policy. So if you have that retention policy, then you have to enforce it. And even secure disposing of data, we have just talked about it. But these other things is about the end user devices. This includes laptop, desktop, mobile devices. If you know those users are accessing very sensitive data, then the data in their devices has to be encrypted. And there are different tools to do, tools to do that. For Windows, we have like BitLocker. For Mac, we have the so-called file vault. And for Linux, we have BM Clipped. So these tools can help you to do the encryption of sensitive data that are on end users' devices. The removable media, the same to be applied. But also when data are stored in database, database stores varieties of data. And some data are very crucial, like personal identified information, financial information, some sensitive information. So according to the classification of your data, all those data that are deemed to be sensitive, you have to encrypt them even in your database. You may find someone having a database with very sensitive information like account number, or oh, some people's address and what and what, but they are just plain. It means if someone just write a SQL query, can retrieve. That is not proper. They have to be encrypted even at least. And during transmission, it also about TLS and the HTTPS staffs, SSH, SSH staffs. When you move data from one point to another, encryption has to be in point. You may find, or you may be surprised to find it, an enterprise using devices, even switches. But when data is moving from one switch to a device or from one switch to another, the protocol uses Telnet and we know it's unsecured. That is not right. And of course, the segmentation we talk about. So as we have seen, most of these stuffs are procedures, but we are going to see some implementation of some of them. For instance, this log of sensitive data access. We talked about log. We said that even if you may not be able to put all this protection at end, which also should not take it for granted, you should put it. But at least if you have another layer of protection, you have proper logs. It means even when data are moving in an authorized manner, you will have a log about it. So it's easier for you to have triggers and to know now certain data has been accessed in a way that it should not be accessed. So this one we are going to demonstrate in, in, in the next session, not actually the coming session, but in the future session we are going to demonstrate, especially after we have covered the control number five and the control number six, which are about account control and access risk control. After we have covered two of them, then with this one, we are going to demonstrate both of them together to show how can we log access to sensitive data so that whenever something suspicious happens to your data, be it on database, be it on flat files, you know and you can trigger it. Thank you and have a nice day.